Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time going back to post-duel commentary, but this time with sped up games rather than replays, because the replays just go a little bit too fast for me. But playing against one of my Discord buddies, Dmall, and he's playing with Demise Cosmo for this set of three games, and I'm playing with the True King Zodiac deck yet again, because I felt like if I was able to actually focus on gameplay, I could actually probably just do a lot better and actually have a much better result with the deck. Uh, unfortunately, there's a little bit of bugginess going on with Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro there, but he revealed off Tin Can, he revealed Dark Destroyer, Dark Lady, and Forerunner, and I ended up giving him the Forerunner. And so, my hand is pretty cool in terms of what it has access to. I've got a Max C, which is going to be used right here in response to his Tin Can. Um, I had no knowledge that he had Slip Rider in hand, so he uses Slip Rider to pop my Dragonic Diagram, but off the Max C, I draw another copy of Dragonic Diagram, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm able to just activate it and uh, hope that there's nothing that I'm going to have to deal with as far as back row is concerned. But I try to activate the Dragonic Diagram's effect, which resolves, allowing me to pop the Bostros out of my hand. And from here, I just sort of contemplate what I want to search, because I'm just trying to formulate what I want to do here as far as getting rid of things. And I remember that I do have him under Max C, so if I'm capable of just pushing through more and more things, then we can definitely like take advantage of that as far as a play line. But, so I end up searching the trap off the field spell, because the trap is very good for floating and preventing myself from dying, as well as being able to be spot removal is absolutely just incredible. Being able to set it and then tribute over the set trap for something like Dynamite Knuckle. And then being able to pop his Slip Rider, and then potentially having the Knuckle be able to add another copy of the trap is just a big, like, a big amount of play strings as far as being in my favor in terms of floating properly. Uh, but so he ends up revealing the Cosmojo, destroying his Slip Rider, and I was trying to destroy his Slip Rider anyway, so it doesn't really matter, like, whether or not the Cosmojo is activated here. Uh, but I am going to get another draw off Max C off this. I end up drawing into Lithosasm, and so it's a, it's a pretty good sequence of plays in terms of drawing. I do have access to Masterpiece in my hand, which is very good. And so I just attack over the Wicked Witch just so that it basically forces the Thousand, uh, the Thousand that has to be taken. Uh, because that's basically what I'm trying to do, is just force his life points down at this point, because I can tribute for Masterpiece on his turn after I float a monster back anyway with Revival of the True Kings, and then that Masterpiece will be unaffected by traps and monster effects. And so his Dark Destroyer is already in Grave, and Dark Destroyer is the only real out to that card, but not when it's immune by monster effects and getting boosted by 300 by Dragonic Diagram. So it's it's a very good like like tunnel vision play that I'm going for. I'm going for tunnel visioning into that sort of play because it just seems like it's the best way to go. But he carded Demise and draws a few cards. The Forerunner I already knew is, was in his hand, so he draws two more cards. They end up both being straw man. And he ends up just discarding them both. So it's not very optimal as far as uh, as far as how this goes. But so during the end phase, I just float back uh, the Bostros and just use it to pop off a Dragonic Diagram to just try and get more cards flowing, get more things going in my favor, and so end up searching for Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix and then using Bustrus to summon a monster out of my deck. Now, I can't remember what I got. I think it was, yeah, it was Agnomazd, the uh, Fire True King. Now, this is where I find out that uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro right now is a little bit buggy when it comes to the actual True King cards, and so this game actually, it doesn't, luckily it doesn't really affect this game too negatively um, for my opponent because, one, I was already in a commanding position, and two, I'm banishing cards that he can add back off Cosmotown anyway, and that's like a much more readily accessible card than anything else. But so, you have to banish two of the same attribute for Agnimazd to banish a card. But I just popped another copy of Agnimazd and a uh, Lithosasm, so that's an Earth. So, it shouldn't have been able to activate there, but for some reason, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro currently is coded incorrectly for the regular main deck True Kings, the actual like big True King monsters. But So I activate my Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix that I searched, and I use it to get an additional normal summon for Masterpiece uh, using the uh, using the trap, and then using the trap to target his Wicked Witch, and then he chains his Wicked Witch to pay a thousand, and then I chain Masterpiece's effect so that I can destroy the Wicked Witch before its effect has a chance to resolve. And so it's ultimately just really good for me. And now my Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix is live. I've used an additional normal summon off of the uh, Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix effect, so I can normal summon my Mulmorat which is very good, or I can normal summon the Dynamite Knuckle if that's something that I want to go down, but I end up deciding to normal summon the Mulmorat because at this point, I don't have a lot of, like, room on my board to make the, you know, Rat into Emerald into Dry into Dryden play, but what I do have access to off of the, uh, off of the Rat here is just going straight up into Dryden, and that would be very good for me, but he flips D-Barrier so that I don't get to Xyz, and 
From here, he just Storming Mirror forces me because I have game on board as far as attack points go, and he only has one card, and I've got Masterpiece, which is immune to trap effects. So I'm perfectly fine swinging into it because Masterpiece is the only thing I really care about, as well as having the trap card to float. Um, so it's just ultimately just very, uh, very good for me. And he ends up, like, just not really being able to mount too much of a play line during this game. And the Masterpiece, honestly, just being the card that you tunnel vision into for this deck is absolutely just amazing. Like, it's such a boss monster. That's the problem I had in the last video, which is why I actually wanted to actually go back and do this in a different format, do post-dual commentary, and actually be able to focus on playlines. Because Masterpiece himself is actually just a huge asset of what makes this deck so good. And I didn't realize that until literally like the last game of the uh, previous video. <laughs> and so, just trying to uh, utilize my cards to the best potential that I can for floating capabilities. Because this deck does play a little bit more slowly and methodically, but because of that, you're able to actually just string games along in the way that you want them to go. But, so, my opponent draws Cosmotown, activates it, adds back 10 can, and tries to summon it before he has a chance to end the phase. I flip over my Revival of the True King, bring back a card to float it back just to get the free plus, and then use its effect to normal summon on my opponent's turn, sending the Revival of the True King to grave, popping his 10 can. So, popping the 10 can before it gets to end phase. So, a very good sequence of plays, I believe so at least. I really do find it refreshing how resource based this deck is and because the monsters are so naturally big and also floating, like they have floating potential and like the little uh, the little monarch style cards, the tribute summonables are actually just really good in terms of the advantage and resources they give you. Ultimately I just find it a really really cool deck uh, to play overall just because it plays on a different spectrum of the, uh, of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh as other decks do. Uh, but so, he resolves a tin can, I don't give him the Dark Destroyer again, I can't remember exactly what I gave him off this one, it was either a Slip Rider or a Forerunner, and I think I remember it being exactly Slip Rider, and that's why I set the trap and then used Dynamite Knuckle immediately, um, to try and pop the, uh, tin can, because I have double of the field spell, but I could just lose to Slip Rider tin can, and so I'm expecting him to summon Slip Rider out of his hand, but instead he summons Forerunner, and so, then I play my Dragonic Diagram, and Cosmojo that I expected to kind of be there, ends up coming out and the Dragonic Diagram gets banished and then he floats his Forerunner down into a Wicked Witch, which now means that the Slip Rider that I do know is in his hand is 100% guaranteed going to pop the uh, second Dragonic Diagram if I play it. And so I have to really sort of take this a bit slower than I would normally just because of the fact that I know that these things are going to happen and I know it's not going to be good for me. Now I do have access to a couple of different plays as far as what I could do, I can just leave the Revival of the True Kings on the board and the uh, and the Dynamite Knuckle, which is what I've left. I believe its name is Dynamite Knuckle, but the, the Trap Searcher, the Trap Searcher slash Activator. Um, or I could just pop the Dynamite Knuckle since it's a water, plus the Agnamazd in hand for the Bostros, and then the Agnamazd would add back the Dynamite Knuckle, and then I'd have cards in grave to start floating back with Revival of the True Kings. But I do still have Revival of the True Kings live if he kills the Dynamite Knuckle, so I'm not too worried about it, especially since, like, there's no more copies of the trap in my deck, but so he uses Cosmotown on his turn to add back Forerunner, summons it over Wicked Witch, and then tries to normal summon Farm Girl, trying to get me with that spicy, that spicy damage that he can that he could hit me with. But Revival of the True Kings allows me to float the monster he literally just killed back to the board. Now, Farm Girl can kill it very very easily, but I'm not gonna be dealing with Farm Girl going a search and then doing other stuff. So I draw a Soul Charge, and I know he still has the Slip Rider in his hand off of the first tin can, and he still has a Pilot on the field. So not something that I'm going to be able to deal with on this current basis of turns, but I really want the Dragonic Diagram to resolve, but I'm weighing my options back and forth and ultimately decide that the Soul Charge play um, is just a better overall play line of what I could do because it sets up my Revival of the True Kings and basically means that I can just try and outgrind him as far as resources go because the only card that's going to be bigger than my Bostros and my Agnimazd is Dark Destroyer, which is in the graveyard, meaning that I'm on a much better of a turn clock situation than he is because he does have to find a way to either banish the Dark Destroyer from his graveyard or he has to basically draw a call of the Haunted. But so I'm able to add back Dynamite Knuckle off the Agnimazd and have a Bostros, meaning that I basically can't die. I feel very comfortable in my situation, and even if he did have something like Dark Destroyer to out, the Bostros, then I would be able to use its effect since it was destroyed by card effect to summon another one from deck. So it's overall just a very strong line. And now, as you see, I'm over here reading VFD because I do have a VFD play that I can make next turn 
um, off of Enphase summoning Agnimaz out of the grave. And so VFD is also just another big, amazing threat against this deck. So it's just something that I'm very, very handily considering in terms of what I can do. But so he uses Cosmo Town, a pair of them actually, to add back Tin Can and then add back Wicked Witch, and then shuffles away the Wicked Witch to draw a random card. Normal summons Tin Can and then goes to end his turn. And so at the end of the turn, he's going to get his Tin Can to reveal three, and I'm going to be able to use Revival of the True Kings to bring back my Agnimaz. And so I'm choosing to go ahead and do it now versus after he searches so that there's like just less potential things that could go wrong in terms of what happens. But so he reveals a Dark Lady, a Forerunner, and a Slip Rider. I believe another Slip Rider, and I think that's what I gave him was the other Slip Rider. So now he has two Slip Riders in hand that I should know about if I'm correct on this. Uh, but I still have no idea what his back row is. And so at this point, I'm just, just kind of doing random things. And I decided to make the VFD because the VFD does beat over everything and it does give a nice stun aspect. But here, he makes a huge mistake in not understanding how VFD works. He chains Torrential to my summon. And so I chain VFD's effect on Light. Now, VFD does not have to remain face up to negate the effects in your opponent's possession of the cards because it's all in commas a part of the first effect that is a quick effect on your either player's turn to change the attributes that is all one line of effect and it is thus a lingering quick effect so by me calling light there by vfd all of his monsters die and his two ships cannot float down because i called light and it says monsters in your opponent's possession cannot activate their effects so thus in your possession means literally anywhere on your side of the field whether it's banished graveyard field destroyed in hand anywhere and so that's an amazing thing that just allows me to just basically come back into this even though I wasn't really in that bad of a situation I'm leading on life and I've got a continuous floating card so ultimately it was a good position for me to be in otherwise but overall I just it became so much better once I got that forerunner off the board with his own torrential like that that just became way too good but so I draw a masterpiece on this turn and this just starts becoming the point where Things are really, really going in my favor because I do have the Revival of the True Kings. I've got all this stuff, and so I don't really want to get rid of the Revival of the True King, but I will for a card like Masterpiece. Like, you don't understand. So I decided to use its effect to bring back Masterpiece so that I have another, you know, just wall of defense on the board. I can't overlay this turn, uh, but I'm able to make Masterpiece and then do the same play that I did game one where I use the Revival of the True Kings to try and pop Wicked Witch and then chain Masterpiece's effect to Wicked Witch trying to protect itself. And then just try to attack, and it's unaffected by traps, so I can just easily just slide in. It's very clean cut in my favor. As soon as that masterpiece was in my hand, it was just over because of the fact that I was able to just keep myself alive for turn after turn with Revival of the True Kings. But game three, Cosmo Tin Can is normal summoned, setting two, and then in phase, uh, paying five to reveal three. And uh, off this one, he reveals Forerunner, Slip Rider, and Dark Destroyer, and I end up giving him the Forerunner. Uh, going back to check what's in his grave, and there's the Dark Destroyer and the Slip Rider there, so he has Forerunner in his hand. So the knowledge I have of what's in his hand is Forerunner. And so at this point, he has two sets, and I have a sort of hand that can deal with that. And so I decided to activate the Disciples of the True Great Draco Phoenix and then tribute over for Majesty Maiden, because the Draco Phoenix will pop a spell or trap when it's sent to grave. And so then I can also just use this as justification to try and set up a, uh, a Masterpiece play. Uh, but So I've got two copies of Dragonite Diagram in the form of the Terraforming and Dragonite Diagram. So I basically just tribute over and I pop a card, ends up being a Cosmojo that he chooses not to chain for good reason. He'd be getting rid of his pilot if he did otherwise. But that's such a strong card to have even with the Forerunner because that means he'd be able to float down into Slip Rider multiple different ways. Uh, but So I activate the Dragonite Diagram and I go to pop the Agnimaz out of my hand because at this point I'm not too worried about what's going to be uh, happening. I don't feel like the other card that he has set is that big of a threat. And so the Agnimaz doesn't get a floating effect, but at least it'll be in the grave. So when I'm, my, my game plan here is to go for Dynamite Knuckle to get a Revival of the True Kings and then hopefully also have a Masterpiece live. And that's what the Majesty Maiden is going on here. I'm debating on whether or not I want to search Dynamite Knuckle or Masterpiece right here. And I end up settling on Dynamite Knuckle because it is definitely something that needs to happen first. But so he goes for Cosmo Dark Lady out of his hand, chaining the Tin Can, which is what triggered my Majesty Maiden. Um, and I get to discard, uh, destroy, rather, Miramune. And Miramune is not going to be able to trigger now because of that Dark Lady, unless he just doesn't negate it. And so, at this point, I'm like, what do I want to do here? So I decide to add True Draco Succession because it does give me draws, as well as give me an additional Normal Summon, which is what I'm going to need off the Dynamite Knuckle. And I try to activate the Miramune, and it does resolve, actually allowing me to search for Masterpiece. So at this point, I'm not really sure exactly what my playline is trying to be, and it probably was arguably better 
for me to just immediately go into battle phase and try to attack over the Dark Lady to force out the Forerunner. But at this point, I still have no idea what that other set is. And so I decided to use True Draco Succession to draw a card, which ends up drawing Vanity's Emptiness, which is actually really good. And then use it to Tribute Summon over for Dynamite Knuckle. And so I try to use the the, uh, the True Draco Succession to pop his face down, you know, to just not really play around it. It's, it's trying to basically play through the Dark Lady, because if it's anything like Stormy Mirror Force, which I've already seen multiple times, and Dimensional Barrier and stuff like that, it's not going to be real. But it ends up being a Call of the Haunted, bringing back his Dark Destroyer, and then that's just very, very, very bad for me. Um, and unfortunately, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro is coded under OCG rulings, and OCG slash TCG Europe rulings, where Dark Destroyer in America does not get its effect to pop there because it was not on the field long enough to register an activation of its effect, but in Japan and the European TCG, it does get its effect there. So that is more of a broader scope, but ultimately, it's still just bad for me because of the fact that basically the Dark Destroyer is going to destroy my entire board because I activate Dynamite Knuckles' effect not thinking, trying to get the trap, and he negates it with Dark Lady. <laughs> it's just not good for me. Uh, but anyway, so he start, he summons a straw man, and at this point, if I don't flip Emptiness, I'm almost positive that he has some form of game um, because of the fact that like this straw man is going to bring back Dark Destroyer. That's 3k by itself, and then anything else that he can summon out of his hand, which I'm pretty sure is something that's there, that like the Forerunner, for example, that I know is there, um, is going to be game. So I flip the Emptiness, and he doesn't tag out his straw man, and I use the, uh, the Dragonic Diagram to pop my Emptiness, and then set the trap, and then summon Darius Third to try and clear his board of his uh, of his Dark Ladies. And so it actually ends up working out very, very much in my favor. I try to pop one Dark Lady, he tags it out into Forerunner, I use Darius with the boost from the field spell to try and attack over his other Dark Lady, fully expecting him to tag it out if he has another card in his hand that he could tag out into, and then I would attack over the straw man. Um, I probably should have attacked in an, op an opposing order, but I definitely wanted to guarantee that Dark Lady getting off the board, and so if I destroyed it in battle, then that was something fine that I was willing to deal with. I didn't want to attack the straw man first, and then have to RNG basically my opponent choosing to tag out into a bigger monster and then replaying an attack onto the Dark Lady. I'd rather just deal with the threat. Uh, but so, end up using the Dragonic Diagram uh, search off of uh, off of Darius, um, or did I use a Dragonic Diagram search? I can't remember exactly what what just happened there in terms of in terms of things uh, because I'm not really really paying attention to the replays. I just remember how this game went. Uh, but so I summoned Masterpiece and it's immune to spell and monster effects uh, this game. And so I've got Bao Baboon and I've got Mulmorat in hand, or excuse me, Rapier. I don't exactly remember how that uh, that. Darius got popped um, to summon a thing out of deck. I think I just had another Dragonic Diagram or just another way to search it or something. Um, or I maybe tributed Vanity's Emptiness. No, that's not what happened. I can't even remember um, exactly, but he's got Double Forerunner and I've got Masterpiece, which is bigger than him. Um, and so from here, now I just have a free turn to be able to pop off because I've got Balmaboon and I did draw rats, like Momo rats, rep peers, multiples of them, but Balmaboon is very cool and unique in that I get to draw a card put one of the uh, rat peers back on bottom of the deck, and then the two baboons that I summon here allow me to put the other rat peer back on bottom of the deck. And so I choose to swap out the uh, the ghost ogre and the uh, the rats, and then go into an invoker to go into a rat peer play, because now I'm actually operating on the zodiac side of this engine. I've got masterpiece as a form of removal, but I can't target the forerunners. So at this point, I'm just sort of structuring my play in the way where I'm going to be able to getting the, be getting the very, very most value out of this max C. I'm going to be getting an amazing amount of value out of this Max C because I'm going to attack over a Forerunner and then on Attack Declaration activate the Max C. If he doesn't float, fine! I don't care! That's a threat off the board. But if he does float, he's going to start summoning monsters that are lower down in the tier of Cosmo ships and Cosmo monsters, which can be targeted, which means I'm going to be able to pop it with Drancia and pop it with Masterpiece and just get a huge amount of cards off of this Max C that I've got access to, which means that this game is just very far in my favor. But being able to resolve Emerald to reset my resource pool on the Zodiac side, and then resolve uh, the Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix to put back my traps, my uh, my Revival of the True King trap. I've drew the other copy, but I need the other one back in deck so that I can you know use some good interactions off Dynamite Knuckle and stuff like that. And now I'm basically just trying to decide what I want to do as far as how I'm going to end this play line because I do have an additional normal summon that I can get granted to me by Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. Um, and I'm deciding on whether or not I want to take it there or not, or if I just want to leave it. And I decided to just leave it, so I attack over with Masterpiece, and he summons down to Slip Rider, and I'm getting draws off Max C. I draw into a Ghost Ogre, which is actually just really good. 
And then I use Dryden here to pop his Slip Rider that he summons, and that is going to make him float down further. He has no choice but to float, because he's so low on cards compared to me. And so now he summoned a Wicked Witch, which is fine, because my, tr my Masterpiece hasn't used its Destruction effect yet. And so I get to attack the uh, Wicked Witch to bait its effect out, and then I get to do the exact same thing I've done the other two games, and that is to use Masterpiece in response to pop it before its effect can resolve. And so from here, I'm fine with not continuing the battle. I get to use True Drake of Succession to get an additional normal summon on my Darius, just so I don't have to deal with other like threats, I guess, and I can swap out for the True Draco Phoenix. And then that also allows me to have a draw engine with the Succession, which I already got to draw off the Phoenix, so there's not really anything I need to do there. So I can draw another one of card, and it also fuels the Masterpiece further. But so from here, all he's got on the field is a Forerunner, and I've got a Ghost Ogre that I drew, which is amazing. And so, he goes to activate the effect to gain a thousand, I Ghost Ogre, because Ghost Ogre doesn't target, and that's just really good for me from here, because now he's down to one card plus whatever he's floating into off of the Forerunner, and whatever he floats to off the Forerunner, I can destroy with Dryden and Masterpiece. I have two forms of disruption, and that's incredibly good for me. And the Masterpiece is unaffected by spells, so even if he had something like a board wipe like Kergeki or something, it wouldn't really matter. But so, I use Dryden when he summons his Straw Man, just pop it, not even dealing with it, then he sets a card and tries to end turn, and I just Masterpiece it out in the end phase, so that there's nothing else that can happen, and this game is over. My opponent has no cards, I just turn my, uh, I just turn my stuff to attack mode that I want to use, and then that's just the game from there. So anyway, that's a bit of a longer video, but it is post-dual commentary, and the video was sped up to twice normal speed, so it is still like a 20 minute long video if you guys long like the longer videos, and ultimately, I do kind of like this format, even though it's a little bit more like uh, intensive in terms of what it requires from me to actually make the videos, but that's fine. I'm willing to put extra time into it because it actually allows me to like culminate thought processes and stuff. It allows me to play slower in game, actually like do correct play sequencing and stuff like that, which I mean, if you look at this video versus the past video, the most recent video that I did with True Kings, the last video, there's a huge improvement in play string and structuring on what I did in this video versus that one, just because I didn't have to focus on commentary while I was playing. I could literally just play a 40 minute long match of three games and then just know that I could speed it up to double speed and then just have it from there. But basically, let me know what you guys think about this type of video in the comments down below this format of not doing replays, but just filming the games and then speeding them up and commentating over them. Because like I said, it's not quite as fast as replays are, which is probably the best like thing. Uh, because of the fact that the replays go so fast. It gives you infinite like knowledge, but it, it goes so fast that it's so hard to commentate over and follow. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description of my Facebook page if you want to mess with that. Or if you want to support me directly, there's a link directly to my Patreon page as well. There have already been some very kind souls that have donated to me to help support me and my endeavors and stuff like that. And if you want to be one of those people, as well as if you want to get in on a monthly giveaway for a box of Raging Tempest that's going on at the end of this month, then definitely go check that out. There's a raffle giveaway that's directly linked to the reward tiers that I've got on my Patreon page if you want to check that out. But other than that, if you want to just basically just support me, help me out, allow me to do things like live stream on like maybe semi-daily basis and stuff like that, then definitely go check that out if that's what you want to do. But other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will see you next time, guys. Take care.